saw this session will be a very, very insightful session with uh, Prof. Emeritus Datuk Dr. Jamil uh, Haji Osman. Okay, so before we go further, uh, I think it's better for me to introduce our uh, special guest today. So um, he is the president of IIUM Retires Club and currently he is the director for International Institute of Islamic Talk for East and Southeast Asia. He also the Dean for our beloved Kulia, okay, and also the Dean of Admission and Records IIUM, uh, Deputy Dean Academic Affairs, Head Department of Economics, Deputy Dean Student Affairs IIUM. So a lot of his involvement in IIUM administration and I think it's very uh, blessed and honor for us to having uh, Datuk Dr. Jamil today. So without further ado, uh, uh, I welcome uh, Prof. Emeritus Datuk Dr. Jamil. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Brother Zahid, and all the participants from the Kulia. This is my Kulia that we started the Kulia in 1983. And I left the Kulia in 2008 to become director of UNISHAP now, before that was in Sanya. So after that, and coming back to Kuala Lumpur and taking over the post of um, director of International Institute of Summit Thoughts. Uh, my office in the KICT building. I've been given the task by Berzahid and the committee to share in the sharing session, managing life after graduation. But in fact, before that, Haji Yusuf has already contacted me uh, to give a talk something life after retirement. So I thought that it is going to be life after retirement, which is not so much relevant. It's too far from all of you uh, expected to graduate. But inshallah, I will try my best, whatever it is, uh, to share my views on the life after graduation. Because in fact, some of you will be graduating very soon. Some have already graduated. There are two. Can I share the slide, um, Brother Zay? Yes, I do. Okay. Um, fact, Brother Zahid has given me these two important questions to be answered in this 20 minute session. What we have to do after graduation? And number two, why is it important to manage our life after graduation? So, of course, being a student who, um, who is still in the university, these are the questions that are being asked by everybody. What will I do after I graduate? You know? So for question one, I think what we have to do after graduation, uh, very simple, which everybody can answer it. First, we have to find a job. Definitely everybody will look for a job after they graduated or get a place at a graduate school to do your master's or PhD and so on. And then some of you might want to plan your own business or some might decide to stay home or travel or get married and stay home. If you get, you, know, you have enough money, don't worry. You are not worried about working or getting a job. So just stay home because you have a million of ringgit in your saving. So these are among the few people. But majority of the people will not be of this category. Number two, why is it important to manage our life after graduation? The answer to question two, of course, we want to earn money for yourself. Uh, if you are in the university, uh, you will normally receive pocket money from your parents, which will be just sufficient to cater for your meals in the university or to buy books. And of course, you want to plan for your future. If you work, you, get, you are going to buy a car, a house to get married and enjoy your life. Or some might have to improve his education to, to master's or PhD and get a better job. Uh, many, many of the students also now will not stop after bachelor, they will go for their master's or some other professional training. So this is very important. So this, uh, number three, what is next? You want to save money and buy property. 
you get a job, try to do some saving and buy all those what you want. You get the highest qualification, if you go for your master's in PhD, then you try to get your PhD, then uh, you'll be happy because uh, you will get the highest qualification and with the title of doctor. Uh, or to get a good job at an established company and organization. Some people, they don't, they don't bother so much about the title. Doesn't matter whether you have DR or not DR. What is important for you to get a good job with good salary at an, an established organization. Established organization, which means you can assure that you can stay there longer, you get a lot of bonuses and perks and so on. So that's why you choose for this kind of organization. What's next? To be a successful man and woman in whatever career that you have chosen. This is your dream to be successful. Okay, so I have seen many people, uh, they have the dream, even while, while they are in the university, to become a politician, to become a minister, even to become a prime minister. Some people achieve it, some people might not achieve it, but at least you have the dream. You know? So how to achieve a successful career? This is very important. Uh, while you are in university, we might not think of of this, how to gain the heart of the, your, your employer. You have to work hard and work smart. If you work with some international organization like uh, Japanese organizations or American organization, you have to really prove yourself. You work hard, you, show, you are dedicated staff. You have to show your interest in your work. If you don't enjoy in your work, then it means that you are not happy. You will not be successful in the in the profession. Uh, you have to be positive in your work. You be positive means mean to be to enjoy in your work. This is very important. Don't take your work negatively. Always pray to Allah and think think of Him on what you have already achieved. Some people have forgotten all this. They they, they thought they work hard, they work smart, they achieve what they want. So. This is very important, especially uh, those who do not have uh, much exposure to religious knowledge. So I am a student like you, I think you have been reminded uh, during your first year, during your metric, and until now you have the Ustas always reminded you. So um, you have Ustra and, and so on. So to avoid any negative attitude, negative attitude with your friends, with anybody in the organization that will affect your career. Uh, you come to the office with a sour face, you know, all this kind of thing. A negative attitude will not go further. And people are watching at you. So it is important that to develop yourself to minimize your negative attitude, even to remove your negative attitude. So be more positive than negative. And then maintain your your good behavior in Akla, this is very important. Akla and behavior reflect your ethics in work. If you're cheating your organization, you take your time to do certain things, you know, you, the way that you claim the money from the organization, misuse the fund, though these are unethical. There is no Akla in, the, in your work. So, uh, sorry. So to sum up, all this because you want to be successful in your life. Is that right? You want to be successful in your life. Successful in your career, for your family and your community. You, you will do something for your family if you are successful. Family means that you with your parents, you with your, uh, your wife and children and, and so on and so on. If you are successful, it means that you'll be happy in your life. So a happy person, a successful person always make themselves happy. They have all kind of things. In general, happiness is important. You know, think what you want in your life. What you want is happiness. So we can classify happiness into three. One, you have physical happiness. 
Two, you have emotional happiness. Three, you have spiritual happiness. Physicals mean that in the form of uh, money, assets, uh, your health, uh, your job, and so on. These are, this is what we call physical happiness. Emotional means that uh, oh, your people call you a doctor, people call you a professor, people call you whatever title that you have, Datu, Hotun, or, or anything, that will make you emotionally happy, you know? Uh, this is human being. You have been praised, something like that. You know? And the other aspect is spiritual happiness. Spiritual happiness is always the thing that makes you close to Allah. You never forget Allah. How successful, how successful that you are, you never, you never forget Allah. First thing that you do is to thank Allah, to appreciate what Allah has given to you. So this is most of the thing that uh, many of us tend to forget. So when you get your promotion, okay, you make a, you make a party, uh, you make a long letter to your boss, you tell your boss, thank you very much for appreciating me or giving me this promotion. You tell everybody because I'm close to the boss, then I get, I get this promotion. So, but you forgot. You forgot that uh, the risk that came from Allah. Allah has consented your boss to, to, to promote you into a certain position. So this is what spiritual happiness is. And as I told you, many people forget about it. They take for granted, not because they forget Allah. They take for granted, oh, Allah will give you whatever it is. Uh, because Allah loves everybody. So, so physical happiness, then, if you are successful in your career, you'll be physically happy. What it means by physically happy? You can have what you want in your life. You have money, you have a house, you have a car, you are very successful, you don't, you don't have any much problem about money. There's a big salary, a big house, big cars, and many people dream of this. You know, I have a few friends who are telling me, you know, when they were in the university, they dream all this kind of thing. But Alhamdulillah, when they reach at the age of 50, they have achieved all this. And they don't know what to do with the money. And one day, they only realize that this physical happiness will never, will never last. One day, you might lose all your property. You tend to be unhappy again. So, so this is what physical happiness is. Emotional happiness means that a successful person will be emotionally happy. As I told you, why we are emotionally happy? Because you get respect from your staff. If you're the head of the department, you know, you conduct the meeting and people listen at you, you know, after the meeting. So everybody, we, we praise you as the boss. People always listen to what you say. What you say, people will we take it, you know. Although they have whatever argument, but the final word is coming from you as the boss. Especially you become the CEO of organization. 20,000 people, 30,000 people, they are all under your supervision. So their fate will be depend, depending on you. You know, you want to promote them to give two months bonus, one, one month bonus, or to give 12 months bonus. So everybody wants to be close with you. People will always praise you whatever achievement you have made. Now, my boss, uh, now I'm being uh, compared the comfort as the best, the best staff of the year. So your picture will appear everywhere in the organization. So this is, you are emotionally happy. So everywhere people go, you go to the canteen, go to the meeting, or everybody say congratulations to you. Then they make you emotionally happy. Your family will be proud of your achievement. And you have many friends around you. Of course, being a boss, you know, many friends will be around you. People will come, oh, everybody starts saying that he's my boss, he's my boss. You know? And your name will appear everywhere in the organization. You know? All this make you emotionally happy. This is uh, what people tend to forget. Uh, emotional happiness will also not last. You know, so after a certain time, you know, uh, it will decline or it will erase away. So the spiritual happiness, the physical and emotional happiness will not last, lasting happiness. Some people will lose their happiness while they are still young. 
Sometimes they, they reach at the age of 40 or 45 or even 50, they lose their job. They lose their position. They lose the when you lose your job, you lose your position, you lose the respect from others. They say, oh, he is being retrenched, you know, he's a corrupted boss, whatever it is. All kind of accusation will come to you. you know? So some people they lose their physical health, you know, because they work so hard, they forget about their physical health, they got a stroke, they got a heart attack, and they have to be retrenched from the job they, they have to leave the job for medical reason this is sometimes the thing that we tend to forget we thought that uh, our physical and emotional happiness will be prolonged next 10 years next 20 years next 30 years we don't know 10 years is a very short so the only thing is that you have to remember allah in the time of ease and he will remember you in the time of difficulty so this is important for all of you as students to remember now. When you leave the university, go and, go and get the job. It will never end. Your life will never end. Your struggle will never end. You know? So although there is no more uh, examination, no more quiz, uh, no more project papers, but you have something else, the challenge in your, in your life, in your career. Spiritual happiness. Someone who lose their physical happiness will be emotionally down. You know, when you lose your, your job, you stay home, you know, everybody will not be, you, even nobody, your close friend will not come to you. Not many of your relatives relative will come and meet you. Okay, he's unemployed now. So, which means this uh, physical happiness, as I, as I told you, is not lasting. You know, emotional happiness is not lasting. So physical happiness will lead to emotional happiness. It means your ha emotional happiness will decline. Why all this happen? Maybe because you have forgotten someone who gave all the happiness. What we thought, all the happiness we got, money. All we thought that all the happiness that we get because of the position of the title, you know, uh, these are the things that we got happiness because we have the title, we have the money, we have the asset, we have the many things. In actual fact, we forgot Allah. Go back to Allah, you'll be happy again. This is what we call spiritual happiness. You know? So coming back to physical, emotional, and spiritual happiness. So it is important from now, you have to start from now. Before you go out to work, you have to be prepared to begin your mission. And what to do of the graduation is to achieve three kinds of happiness, not two kinds of happiness. And many people think that only physical happiness. They say, I don't care whether I get my doctorate or not whether I get my datuk or not, whether I become the head department or not, what is important, I get a good job, good salary. But after some time, if people start praising him for his good job, then he tends to become emotionally happy. So don't forget the spiritual happiness. So how successful that you are, please do not forget Allah. You have to thank Allah first before you appreciate anyone else your boss, your friend, or your parent. Always remember, the reward from Allah does not end in this world, nor in the hereafter. So this is important thing that to be remembered by, by everybody. So many people, when they tend to forget, they only not only lose their spiritual happiness while they are working, even after they are retired, only they realize, Oh, I, I forgot. I forgot to thank Allah when I was successful. Now, I don't have anything. After you retired, you'll be physically down. You, ask, you don't have any more, much more money, not like before. You cannot travel freely like when, when you were working, you know. And you, do, you lose all the friends in the office. So this is something that to be prepared 
although it is going to be a long time for you, maybe 20 years, 30 years, but still you have to keep in mind how important the spiritual happiness is. So always remember Allah. In the Quran, Surah Al-Baqarah, ayat number 52, 152, remember me, I will remember you. So Allah will always remember you. No matter how busy you are, always remember Allah. So this is very important. Some people say, oh, I, I'm so busy with my work. I, I could not perform the, I will combine my prayer, for example, because so busy with my work. So that is not the right way, not the right attitude. No? When sadness fill your heart, tears flow in your eyes, Remember three things. One, Allah is with you. Allah always with you. Allah still with you. So this thing is a guide for you. Allah will never give up. Allah is always with you. So when you are broken, when you are hopeless, let Allah help you, change you, and make you strong. So you have to always remember Allah. So only this, then everything will change. In conclusion, why it is important to manage your life? Because we want to achieve happiness in this world and happiness in the after. So not only happiness in this world, but you'll be sad in the after. Three kinds of happiness, as I mentioned to you, physical happiness, emotional happiness and spiritual happiness must always be together. Don't forget Allah. Inshallah, you will achieve happiness in this world and the day after. I think that's all. Thank you very much, Brother Zahid. Any question we can we can always look for me to, to answer. Thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum uh, wabarakatuh. Thank you very much, Prof. Amaritus Datuk Dr. Jamil insightful and calming session and I think it's very important uh, message that he conveyed to us and uh, it to recaps I think the, uh, the important thing is the three aspects of happiness that all us need to be prepared before our graduation and also uh, during this uh, few days uh, left in Ramadan I think we can reflect ourselves and do better in this month Okay, thank you very much, Prof. Prof. Thank you. Yeah, thank okay, you. I think uh, we can end this session. Thank you for your time. And uh, we end this session with Tasbih Kafarah and Suratul As. <laughs> thank you for the invitation, Zahid, and all the others for participating in this workshop. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Prof.